Welcome back to our playoff round elimination format. The women's inaugural doubles event from Extra Lanes, Ex New Hampshire, Paul Grant, Greg Guya. First round of the playoffs underway. 12 teams, elimination round. The next round is eight, down to four in a two string final on Caleb and Bowling Network. Subscribe free on YouTube to Caleb and Bowling Network. Andy Bailey on lane four. Starts up with a 10. And Sue Holleran, a 10 to start. Sue's at the century mark, all five strings. Deanna Bisbee, a 586. Kerrigan Skinner, a 584.5. Andy Bailey gets six. Five to left, half west to right, the three nine, the ten. Sue Holler in lane three, the three, three, six, ten, seven, eight to left to right. Nice ball, won't carry. Almost. Kelsey Leighton and Shannon Scribner. Shannon Scribner a 587. Actually leads the pack. 587, a 586, and a 584. Nine for Andy Bailey, 19 through two. Nine for Sue Holler in 19 through two. Opening round, qualifying round, uh, playoff round, elimination round, 12 teams out of 16. Top eight scores advanced to the next round. Andy Bailey, head pin. Four, seven, nine, and 10. One, two, four, and nine, eight for Sue Holleran. Andy Bailey scores of 84, 77, 86, 115, and 78. Andy Bailey, nice try. That's the 10 pin, Sue Holler on the one and the four. 10, good pinning, 29 through three. Nine for Sue Holler and 28. Top 12 out of 16. It's again a field of 12, and we're cutting it down to eight after this one string. She had a 160 from Kerrigan Skinner today. She had a triple strike. Dennis McKinley has a 125 and a 133 string today also. Eight box, 37 through four. Sue Holler and nine, 37 through four. Total pinfall for the top eight teams advance. They're not head to head. Originally that was the plan, but with 16 teams, the decision was made to go with elimination rounds. Top eight advance to the next round, quarterfinals. Concluding the two string final. Triangle to four, seven, eight, Randy Bailey. Holding the Sunday Pro League last year, not bowling this year. Sue Holleran, the clip wing eagle, 2 4 left, 3 6 10 on the right. Bailey, right in the middle. He's up to 7 and 8. Here's Peggy Donnelly, and Andy at a 46 half, Sue all at a 45 half. Good crowd on the hand here today, Greg. Dozens of people watching. Like I said, the field will thin out as we go. Faye Sawyer on the left, the Manchester, New Hampshire. Peggy Donnelly, parallel pins plus the six to the right. First time Peggy today. Hey, sorry, nice shot for a spare. Pumps her fist. Peggy Donnelly 
team up with Andy Bailey. Peggy crosses over for strike, it's nine. 10 pin left up from Boxford, Mass. One run average, high single 178, high triple 416. Sawyer on the square seven. 17 up to one this elimination round. First of four rounds. Top eight advance, right on it, spare. Peggy Donnelly is seven in the spare. 17 in the ball. Sawyer for another one, just missed it. That's the two and the five. Darren hustling here at X Lanes, fixing the machines, cleaning up the wood, doing a great job. They get a Riverwalk Lanes in Eastbury, Mass. 2.6 pound bowling ball, Sawyer at 10. Faye 27 through two. One string elimination round, two string final to follow at the end. Top eight advance, then it's down to four, then the final two for two strings. The inaugural women's doubles event from Extra Lanes, Shooters Pub Sports Bar, Extra New Hampshire. Plus the $200 raise for Candle Fence for Cancer Day with wild shirts, raffles, and lemon drops. Peggy steals a few more, has the 1, 3, 7, and 10. Face Sawyer in lane 3. Crosses over, thin hit, gets 7. 3 pin almost went to the 6 and 10. Holds up, would to help. Look for a second spare. Faye threw a 160 against Peter Flynn in the league match tonight. night. Has a high single of 174. This is for a spare, looks good. And look, go, oh, yes! 37 the ball through three. Peggy, six in the fill, 23 through two is open. Thrilling match, there's some great shots, some great strings. Then in the field. It brought out the best, and we're just going to distill it down to the best of the best. We've seen a lot of good bowling here today. $1,500 for the number one prize, $1,000 for second, $600 for third, three hundred for fourth. Jeff Drill just wins the 50-50 raffle. $100 for her, $100 for Candle Pins for Cancer. Eight wild shirts sold, $80 for Candle Pins for Cancer there alone. Peggy Donnelly has the Caleri. Faye Sawyer on lane three, on the bonus. Looks good, strike on spare, wow! 47 through four, 57 plus two. 47 through three, 57 plus two through four. Peggy with the 8-10 lead. Four teams get eliminated, top eight based on point total, advance to the second round. Top four get paid. Peggy at nine, 38 through four. Significant extra pin in a one string match. You never know which pin could be the difference maker. Again, not head to head elimination rounds. Knockout rounds are elimination. That was the plan coming in, but based on the number of teams, choices decided and choices made to go elimination. One string format until the final two strings. Final round be two strings. Peggy the parallel pins plus the eight. Chase Sawyer working a strike. Goes to the three pin, gets four. Working a strike. Strong start for the 53 year old veteran. Peggy the one and the nine. A lot of noise here. Sawyer, punch out the quarter, yikes, a five fill, 62 through four. Peggy and eight, 46 out with a spare six. You gotta have a good sense of humor to play this game if they let out a wow on that. Faye a six box, 68 half with a six box. What a start. Spare seven, 10, spare strike five, six box, 68 half with Faye Sawyer. Sue Holleran been really going really well all day. We'll try to continue it for her teammate, Faye Sawyer. Try to get that second round of eight. 
Top four get paid. You have to win two rounds to collect, cash in. Andy Bailey has the one, and there's a strike for Sue Holleran. Andy with the one and the seven. Off to a hot start, we might see one of our eight finalists. 46 half, a spare, yes, nice shot. Their first mark, pinned really well in the first half. 56 in the ball through six, one string elimination round. 16 down to 12, we down to eight after this. Then down to four, into the money round, and the final two will be a two string final on Canopy Bowling Network Live. It's getting good, folks. Please like and share the video for extra visibility. Andy Bailey, the bonus looks good. Up the head pin, nine. As we wind down the final rounds of this eliminator. 60, eliminator portion. 65, sorry, Greg, 65 through six. Sue, that's why you get two in the fill. Two strikes, rather, two balls. One there. Ball got away to the seventh pin. Face with a 68 half. Andy Bailey again, got it for a spare. She's got two in a row. 75 in the ball through seven. Big come, second ball for Sue Halloran. Sue Halloran. Eight, 63 through six. For another one, robbed by the wood. That's a tough piece of wood. Had to go a little higher on that one. 71 through 7. Hitting really well again. 1 8 box, the rest of all 9s and 10s. And a strike 8. Andy Bailey on the bonus. Misses left, but gets 7. That's the 1, 3, and the 9 behind the 3 pin. 82 through 7. Holleran, 2 2 split, the 2 4 left, the 6 10 to the right. It's one string elimination round of 12. Some great bowling today across the board. Another one missed it left this time. Sue hooked it left also. Sorry, Greg. Looks like Blanca already has three marks in her first six boxes. She and Warrior are off to a good start as well. Paul Grant Special missed the second, make the third. Ten box, 92 through eight. Five box at a time. One string, mark, one string elimination round. Six for Sue. 68 through six. Yeah, Bailey's only lost four pins in six open frames. Very good. Correction, 70, written right Faye Sawyer's box. 77 through eight for uh, Sue Holleran. Faye Sawyer, 60 and a half for her partner. Andy head pin again. And he can't pick up the split. That's a 6 10 to the right. A great piece of work. Another strike for Sue. Your second strike in the last four boxes. I always tease it shouldn't count when you turn around. 87 plus 2. Oh, what a shot. Wow, a spare. Andy Bailey, magnificent. Three marks in the last four boxes. 102 in the ball to the nine. It's their sixth string of the day, and it's as if it's their first. Incredible bowling down the stretch. Nothing like the great game of Canopin Bowling. Get your friends and family go out and bowl, join a league, have some fun, get some exercise. A sport for all ages. Bailey goes right, only four that time. 106 to 9. Having a great string. Sue on the strike. Seven, one, three in the six. 51% success rate for Pro Bowls. That would. Based on Kent Bowling Network stats, barely almost another one. Left up to four. Only up to 90 these days. Sue got the one in the middle, eight in the strike. 95 through nine. Andy Bailey, 10. How about a 116 string? What a performance by Andy Bailey. Thank you, Donnie, you know. Sue Holleran, a 9, 104 string with two strike eights. Halfway through our first elimination, past the halfway point. Five blocks to go. The winners move to the round of eight. Trying to get the round of four to cash in. Peggy Donnelly, 46 half at a spare six in the second. 
Faye Sawyer, a spare, a spare and a strike, 68 half, open here now. Paul Grant Gregulia here live, X for Lane's Shooters Pub Sports Bar, X New Hampshire. The inaugural women's doubles event. Had a five string qualifying round, 12 teams make it. Faye Sawyer half was to left. Grab the two and the eight. Peggy, she just missed the head pin. It's the back of five, the hay bale. 101 average, high single, 178. Sawyer almost, what a try. Highly respected bowler, very polite lady, on and off the lanes. Good role model. Both of the nine. Peggy Donnelly at 55 through six. Faye Sawyer 77 through six. One string here, elimina not, uh, elimination round. So the top eight of these 12 will advance, not head to head. And turning forward to nine is a great way to keep yourself on track for that. Good out by Peggy. Peggy on lane four, goes left, reps three. Peggy has scores of uh, we don't have our individual, here they are, 89, 106, 109, 112, and 96. Nice second ball, almost! Left up the kingpin, the five pin. Sawyer trying to kick the 2-1, sweeps it over, almost, what a try. Faye scores of 112, 87, 105, 109, and 98, 5-11. Just slightly below our average of 104, 103, 104. Peggy, nine, 73, that's 64 through seven, Faye Sawyer nine, 86 through seven. Sue Holler, Faye's teammate, 106, 102, 111, 108, 111, very consistent, 538. Peggy, crosses over, eight, nine, 10, strike! 74 plus 2 through 8, Sawyer crosses over as the diamond. He's going about 27% for pro bowlers without wood. All stats provided by Candlepin Bowling Network. Please subscribe free on YouTube to Candlepin Bowling Network for great matches like these, including the Sunday Pro League, Friday Night Pro League, money matches, and a lot more. Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Oh, what a shot for a spare for Sawyer for fourth mark of the string. 96 in the ball through eight. Wow! Well, it was 24% average for pro bowlers. 27% for diamonds. That would. Well, that's for me. Single, single digits when I hold for the injury. Oh, what a shot! Oh, it was a double! Sawyer on the spare, goes for the three pin and only gets three. One and more. Not happy with that shot. 99 through eight. This is for a spare on strike. And Jones just missed it so close. Oh. 83 through eight, Sawyer. One, two, six, and 10. Trying to get these two here. Peggy Donnelly, always easy the second time around. 10, strike nine, 10. 95 through nine. Sawyer gets two of the four for an eight. 107 through nine. Right now, her and Sue Hollering up to 211 with one box to go. Andy Bailey, 116. Peggy Donnelly, 95 there at 211 also. Top eight advance. For the 12 teams now. Ten box. Nice ball again. Eight. Would have been a good fill. That's the four and seven. And a great ball. The last few boxes. Sawyer back in the pocket off the wall. Diamond again. She made one already. This half. She drew it again. Locking a shot to the left of 114. Dudley, a spare, bumps her fist. Clutch down the stretch. 105 of the ball, Sawyer goes right, missed everything. 
Great ball by these four bowlers. He can win two rounds to cash out. Sawyer, seven, 114. Sue Holland, 104. Face Sawyer, 114, 218 combined. Right, six. Nice string of Peggy Donnelly. 109. Is that right? 109 or 10? 109, yeah. 109 it is. Nice string, Peggy Donnelly. Any luck would have been on 115 or 120. Andy Bailey, 116. Peggy Donnelly, 109, 225. Faye Sawyer. Sue Hollering combined for 218. 114 for Faye, 104 for Sue. We're gonna wait here as teams finish up their first round and see who advances the top eight. One more round to get into the money round. For $1,500 for number one, $1,000 for second, $600 for third, $300 for fourth. The inaugural women's doubles event here at Extra Lanes. And a big event here tomorrow as well. Greg, shall, shall we take a timeout for until the next one? We'll take a timeout, we'll come back for our, our second qualifying round. The final eight, the quarterfinals next See. on Kenneth and Bowling Network. See you soon.
Ready, go ahead. All right, welcome back to our inaugural women's doubles event playoffs, the elimination round, round two. Top eight now are in here. The top four go to the semifinals into the money round. A chance to win $1,500. Michelle and Deanna Bisbee just got ousted in the last round after being one of the top seeds. Final four gets money. Thanks to Nate Lee's running the organization in the background. And to Rob Fakar and Darren for doing a great job here behind the scenes. We've got the same ones from last round. Top four total teams win. Sue Holleran, Faye Sawyer on lane three. Andy Bailey on the right on lane four with Peggy Donnelly. Had a great string. So, to explain, high seeds got lane choice and they were high enough ranked, 218 yep. to 225 to advance, and they said, don't mess with what works. So yep. here and we the, are again, following their story. The finals appear in lanes three and four. Amanda Carroll still in the running with Brooke Betteridge. Amy Doobie. Yeah, yeah. Still in the running. Kelsey Lake and Shannon Scribner also. And we're back to the action now. And with the call, here's Greg Guya. Thanks very much. Bailey starts with eight. Two all around the left with the four and two. I'm seeing that every time. Can Bailey get it full? That's off the wall. Doesn't go that way. And all around not bad. It left the, the half Worcester pins three and nine. So now eight becomes four, and you ought to be in the top 50 percent to get through. Started the day with a five-string total pinfall qualifier, then whittled 12 down from 16. Based on the results of that, and now if I don't hit this microphone out of whack, eight is where we are now. We'll whittle it down to four and then two. Nine to begin for each. Bailey again with the big wind up. Here's a big hit. Five, seven, nine. Wood bridging the five and nine easily. All around, looking for that four to drop. Yes, it does, and she's got a chance for her spare. First spare to start this string. Got a lot of. Bailey off target on the second ball. Holler in, trying to get that ball to hook. That won't go either. That was on the third ball, I beg your pardon. And it's 18 and 17. Got a vibe of the widely successful Outrun the Bear tournaments put on by Danny and Kate Finn over at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis. Of course, it's still apples and oranges, but in the same vein, you don't have to be first as long as you're just not last as we go one string at a time. Three more for Bailey, Hollerus try, three, six, yes, gone. And she spares in the third and she's off and running. Bailey needs an out, here it is, got a pin across, good, eight. So the qualifying rounds, Kelsey Layton, Shannon Scribner, 250 combined. Shannon, a 133. Kelsey Layton, a 117 to advance. Other teams advance in Blonde Gachana, Gachana, Lori Lewis, 212. Sue Holleran here with that spare eight, 35 through three. And Faye Sawyer, 218 combined. Andy Bailey on the right with Peggy Donnelly, 225. Michelle and Jenna Ward, 215. Brooke Betteridge, Amanda Carroll, 209. Deb DeRosia, Glennis McKinley, 239. Another spare for Sue. Two in a row, 45 in the ball through four. Amy Duby and Lynn Duval, 219. Need to win the string to get the pit money round for the semifinals. Good out by Andy Bailey, turning seven into nine. Making the 110. And now hollering on back to back spares. Not nine, eight, spare, eight, spare. Here comes this one. It's hooking left, but it's got the angle. Nine pins wobbling and back, even teetering, but it's going to be a four. Nope. 
So Bailey's got this four and two lead for the last one. Holleran, three and one still for the third ball. So two big third balls coming up. Bailey gets five. Much higher than 50 can Holleran go. Slicing the pins over and good. Getting that seven pin in the corner makes it nine and a 58 half. Baggy Donnelly right, Faith Sawyer on the left, entering frame in just a moment. Faith Sawyer now in lane three. Okay, a high single of 174, high triple 403, high five 625, high 10, 1083. Out of Lakeside Lanes, Manchester, New Hampshire. Bear try, Donnelly just got on the wood. Still two to get. Face that triangle number two, got on it, yes. One box, one spare. Donnelly eight. Fair to 114 last string. 104 for teammate Sue Holleran. Peggy Donnie needs to get to work here to help her teammate. We got a 40 half, Peggy, uh, Andy Bailey. He was great in that last string. Peggy slips, stays behind the foul line. That's the full horseman. Back to Greg. Sawyer, spare fill. Hook over ball. Uh oh, that's two. Faye bowling for over 43 years. Twenty twenty Nixon International Championship winner with Craig Holdworth. Craig in the Kelton Hall of Fame, of course. Also won the Atlantic Kent Open Singles Tour this year. With Kate Finn and Sharon Britton also joining the ACST, different divisions. Ooh, that's tough to get a half Worcester in a five box, 17 through two. Peggy 17 through two, back to Greg. Someone's got three marks over there. I can't see the name of that. <laughs> Kelsey Layton had three marks, no, 16 one half. Shannon Scribner, a partner, spare and a strike now for her. Woo! Donnelly's got a good hit, four and nine, with Wood there. Sawyer's big hit, taps the nine pin, won't drop it. This wood is imperfect, I would say. Donnelly does not have the easiest piece of wood ever. I don't think it's covering the eight. He's going right, she does. Oh, yeah. Too bad, tough break. It just wasn't aligned all that well. It's too bad. It's Sawyer, got it. Your second spare of the string. It's 27 the ball. A spare two, five spare. Biggie Donnelly at 10. Going up the line, eight, nine, 10. Hopefully spare strike. 27 mm -hmm. through three. We're good at We're good at extrapolating from incomplete. Here's Peggy Donnelly. Powerful hit. Slightly off target, but has six. Sawyer, second spare fill. This one gets the angle of the power. They're coming back this way, and it's an eight drop for a 35. That makes up the half foot that she got in the first box. Kelsey Layton actually had a 67 half, not a 61, as earlier reported. And Shannon Scribner, her teammate, has another spare, and she has a 60. 65 half plus the ball for Shannon Scribner, her teammate. They're in good shape here. That's eight for Donnelly. It will be 35. 
Sawyer leaves one and it's 44. Donnelly's got the head pin this time. Bulldozer goes into the six pin and a nasty piece of wood lying around again. Donnelly's got an annoying obstacle in front of a single pin. Lennox McKinley over to our right, way down the other end. Two spares in a row, 48 in the ball through four. We haven't seen it yet today. He really has to hit the cap here, I think. Yeah. Oh. Such an unforgiving piece of wood. Twice got robbed this half of wood. Sawyer, oh, short pins the seven somehow. It looks good all the way. 44 half of Peggy Donnelly with that nine. Pay Sawyer, used the wood for a 10, 54 half. So they're at 112. Sue Holleran, Pay Sawyer, Peggy Donnelly, Andy Bailey just 84. Yeah. Yeah, Pe Peggy, Peggy was a little luckless there. This could easily be a hundred half for them as well. Amanda Sorry, Amanda Kell, Brooke Betteridge will name one and two. They're only at 78th the first nine boxes combined. No marks. Sorry to keep stepping on you, Paul. My fault. Block at 53 half for her. Lori Lewis off to her left in lane two. is on a third spare now of the string. And she's at 50 through four. Back to our action, Andy Bailey looking for a first mark. The two to the left, the three, six, ten to the right. Sue Holland in lane three is the five to the left, the nine to the right. Third balls each coming up. Oops, threw it away. Sue is open. Getting louder and louder here. Playoff atmosphere in Exeter, Shooters Club Sports Bar. Great place to hang out. We'll give birthday parties here, meetings, all kinds of events, trivia nights, outdoor bands, indoors, outdoors. This is a nice ball for, Pitt, for Andy Bailey. The three trying to go, but they hold up. Center triangle. Sue breaks up the split, has the 6 10 on the right. 5 7 8. Boy, those pins are teetering and tottering. Hopefully, they don't wobble the wrong way as Bailey tries to deliver this ball. Seems like they're almost bunched closer together. Well, just off the five. Holleran swipes it over. Yes. Another spare. No, not you, not you. Yeah, those are you. The third ball for Bailey is a perfect one, and it's 10 and a 56 through 7. Generally sound bowling, but they'll need some marks. Sue had all six of her strings over 100 so far today. Yeah, it might. it's surprising to see Andy and Peggy without any marks because their bowling has been pretty sound throughout. Half list are here. Van Holleran setting up a rack of pins. Down comes lane three. Building on 77. Misses the head pin, but washes out. Six is that? Yep. Six it is, 83. Three spares in a string. Not this time. Down to 18s, the next four into the money round. Range from fifteen hundred dollars down to three hundred dollars. Nine for Sue, ninety-two through eight. One string elimination, not head to head. Top four go to the semifinals. And a chance eventually for fifteen hundred dollars for first place, one thousand with the runner-up, six hundred and three hundred the third and fourth spot. Now on gotta be better than average. Half the field cut from now on out. Hundred dollars in raffle money for Candle Prince for Cans, a hundred dollars, eighty dollars in mile shirt. $10 for eight wild shirts sold, $80, plus a few more dollars in lemon drops. About $186 today for Kennel for Cancer. Five pins standing for each of them. 
for Bailey, the four horseman in the eight pin, Kaliri. And for Sue Holler in the one, three, eight, nine, ten. Two up. Two more for Bailey and three more for Holleran. So they'll be looking to pick pins. Holleran now guaranteed a 100 string and she's only in her ninth frame. And an eight for Bailey and a 10 for Holleran, 102. The 156 combined right now for Sue Holleran and Faye Sawyer. Just 119 for Peggy Donnelly and Andy Bailey here in lane four. They'll need to pick it up here. Bailey takes out a triangle. Holleran looking to get some more pins. She's got four horsemen and a nine pin. Sometimes the sleeve can go as one, but it's off the head pin. Oh, oh, put a, a good shot. bit on wow. it. What a shot the makes it. 20%, one in five chance to convert. Got it. 112 of all the 10th. Andy, tough string, open string. Just 78 that time. Peggy Donald needs some work to advance to the semifinals. The cut for the last round was 203, if I recall correctly. Uh, I'm sorry, what's that, Greg? I believe the cut for last round was 203, if it helps as a frame of reference for our viewers. I believe so. Two more gives 114 for Sue Holleran. And now Donnelly on the right and Sawyer on the left. the cutoff, Greg, coming into this uh, round of eight. Donnelly takes out three. That took out the six, the eight, and the nine. Sawyer, she's got the head pin. Not bad. That's three on the right side, three, six, ten. Betteridge, I believe, just doubled in the tenth, and that was the ecstatic yell you heard over on lane one. And she'll be in the one teens at least. Work took a few years off. She used to bowl three or four nights a week, only bowling 105 out of Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. Trying to get back on her game. Double strike in the 10th, 103 plus a ball. Did Sawyer get this? Ooh, nudged the pin aside. It'll be a nine for 63. Work better on lane one, double strike five in the 10th box. Ends up with a 108, giving Amanda Carroll life, and she's on a spare. 48 in the ball. So that, that, gives should, some hope, that gives them hope for the semifinals yeah, in the money that should, round. That should be up 200 plus there. They've been doubles partners for over 30 years. Amanda Carroll out of Gray Main and Brooke Betteridge out of Saco Main. Blanca finished with 98 and Lori Lewis is working on 14 over, so that should be over 200 as well. Donnelly takes out eight and has a chance. Sawyer seven, no eight. That's going to be the one eight. Lisa Wood's going to get out of the way, so it's going to need to be a full shot, but we've seen this made several times already today. In fact, it's the same lead for Donnelly, and nothing happened despite the sidewall carrying in the wood. Can Sawyer put a full ball on it? Oh, it looked full. It was going straight back. Probably peaked the microphone in my surprise. It looked so good going down. Nine brings up 62. 61, excuse me, for Peggy. That's how you get the 10 on that, apparently. Sawyer has 73. Kelsey Layton and Shannon Scribner are tearing it up over there. Shannon's on 106 through nine. So those two are a, probably a prohibitive favorite to go through. Donnelly, oh, you thought that was gonna go there. Got two sidewall cameras, but they didn't carry all the way back to the seven, eight, 10. Sawyer's try. Off target, but this isn't bad. There's an eight pin hiding back there, but this 
cluster of four frequently goes as one. Frequently enough, anyway. So Wood in front of just about every pen fathomable on Donnelly's side on lane four. Here it is, and it doesn't cut left. As we get down to the final boxes here at Exeter Lanes, Sawyer misses. It's eight down and two to get. There's 10. And a good nine for Faye Sawyer, 82 through eight. Sawyer's had two spares so far. Sue Holloran had four. Andy and Peggy, now is this where they start getting something going? The nine pin's going to stay back there, but there looks like there's wood hanging around along with the one three. Sawyer tries to crack it apart, ends up with a five, eight, and 10. Just off. Sawyer trying to kick it over. The ball doesn't trampoline off the wood nicely. Doesn't get the ricochet. She'll end up with nine and 91 through nine. Open swing for Andy Bailey and Peggy Donnelly. In trouble here now to advance. Here the Carroll, three spares the last four blocks, lane one. She's at 97 through eight. He's worked for a double strike five for a 108 strength. Nice ball, it won't go. Oh uh, boy. Well, good. Good ball placement like that has gotten them this far to the top eight. It's not going to work out this time. No shame at all, however. Sue Holloman, a 114 to help carry and face Sawyer this time. There's 100. So 214 combined. Will it be enough to advance to the semifinals in the payday? Let's keep the mics running and see if we can discern what's going on. We so got 80, which side for uh, Peggy Donnelly? Uh, Andy and Peggy, 165. Can you get the, can you get the camera over to lane one and two? Ooh, I'll see. We'll, if not, we'll just, keep, we'll just update you. Uh, <coughs> we, can, we can see the pins. That's Amanda, Amanda Carroll. Carroll's shot doing a spread eagle. Lori Lewis on lane two. Lewis just made a 10, which just brought them over 200. 209, they just got. 203. I don't know if that 209 is going to be enough. Looks like they're going to fall short. Well, by the looks of things, I see Kelsey and Shannon with 238. It looks like Faye and, and uh, Sue are going to fall short. Mm, 224, 216, and 221. Yeah, it's not going to make the cut. Maybe not. They're in the fifth place, I think. By two pins. Wow. I see a 205. So it looks like 238 was the lead. So we'll find out in just a moment. Two points for Faye Sawyer and Sue Holler, and they're out by two pins. Tough break. We're down to the semifinals, one string, then two string final after this on Canada Pavilion we'll Network. We'll sign off for now. We'll keep you here. We'll keep it here. We'll take, take a brief time out. We'll get ready to start our semifinals, the final four into the money round from Exeter Lanes, Exeter, New Hampshire. Paul Grant, Greg Gouillard. We'll see you back in just a moment.
Okay, folks, we're going live again. I'm, just to explain the situation, we have on lane five, Brooke Betteridge and Amanda Carroll. Kel Kelsey Layton and Shannon Scribner on six. They were the best finishers out of all that. And here we have, as you see plainly, Deb DeRocher and Glennis McKinley who will be on lane three and Amy Doobie and Lynn Duvall. I think Lynn started last time, but this time Doobie will go first. She's on the two pin and we're underway. Greg, you get the first half, I'll get the second half. Go ahead. Sounds good. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do me a seven. DeRozier missed it. Hang on, she's got it. How about that? Crowd goes wild. Great crowd on hand here in Exeter. Amy Doobie an eight. Final four. One string elimination. The top two scores are these four bowlers for a two string finals for fifteen hundred dollars. A thousand with the runner up. Two of these teams will get six. One will get six hundred. One will get three hundred. Tough luck with Faye Sawyer and Sue Holleran. Lost by two points in the last round. Back to Greg. Look at that powerful angle by Doobie. Dropped the eight and she's got the nine left. Throwsher, spare fill, just tails away. No, it did catch a piece of the head pin, blowing it sideways for a six fill. 16 after one, the elimination round, semifinals. He missed that time. Missed opportunity. He's got 10. DeRosha pinning very well to start 26 through two. I want to thank Caleb Pins for Cancer for sponsoring the event, as well as Team Maine, Amanda Carroll's Team Maine. Thanks for sponsoring and $500 in raffle. Deb DeRosha in lane three, and Glennis McKinley, her partner here, helped raise $500. While Kim Pelletier is vacationing in London, England. <laughs> Amy Doobie from Fremont, New Hampshire, 107 average, high single, 198, high triple, 480. Out of extra lanes here, extra New Hampshire, shooters for a sports bar. Half Worcester left. And a half Worcester right mirror image for DeRocher. Deb DeRocher from Thuin, Mass. Average of 100, Woo! high single, 194, high triple, 454. Has a high five of 750, high 10, 1169. Two great bounce back balls. Doobie's guaranteed at least nine. Tricky 10 pin, that'll stay put for a nine. Rocher needs to take out a couple on the left side to escape. Will it hook? Not quite, seven. <laughs> Looking over, Kelsey Layton already is off to a hot star, 47 through four. Two spares, 10 pins on those fills. Betteridge just filled a spare with five and she's on 41 through four. Doobie big hit and it's the five nine. Rocher just tails away from the head pin. Now piece of one's gonna settle there. It might give the pins a chance to stay and play. The four horsemen might have a chance to get across to the seven and eight. Now Doobie, five nine, yes. And she's got her first. 37 of the ball. Final four. Inaugural women's doubles event, extra lanes, extra New Hampshire, shooters by sports bar. Paul Grant, Greg Guya with you live on Candlepin Bowling Network. Please subscribe free on YouTube to Candlepin Bowling Network. Tell your friends and family to subscribe. It's free. Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Oh, good out by DeRocher. She just got nine. Dozens of people on hand, hand to watch. Dozens of people on hand here to watch. The match to our right has Amanda Carroll, Brooke Betteridge, Shannon Scribner, and Kelsey Layton. All four of those out of Maine. Good thing it's only dozens. We can't fit much more here. The bar is packed also. Big birthday party at five o'clock. Eight so fill. Two string final next. That's three for DeRocher. Doobie has a chance again with a 4-7. Amanda Carroll, lane five, got a spare. Brooke Federich at a 48-half with a spare five. 
Gone. And Doobie's got her second spare. DeRocher mixing the nine pin won't go anywhere. Got great sidewall action. That pin will go, and that's 10. 52 half for DeRocher as the place heats up. Yeah, both of Academy Lanes, Haverhill Mass. Multiple channel 50 TV appearances. New Hampshire Ladies, team title winner. International winner also in the past. Her teammate, Glennis McKinley, she was awesome in Battle of the Sexes, hosted by Bob Allen in May. Threw an even 1,200 for a 120 average. Average 109 these days, her best ever 123 for a season. A 202 high single, high triple 477. An impressive 721 high five. In high 10, that day was 1,200. Yes, Duval busted it up. She's got triangle number four, the 478. Glennis McKinley starts off. Between between these Bob Kaliri four horsemen and inner pin leaves. Oh, that's getting away, and that's not no spare for Lynn. Between that and that, the DC special of four and two. Away from the head pin. We've seen a lot of those today. Oh, the horseman got run down. I think that would have gone. That would have gone on the, on the lane, got in the way. And the culprit slinks forward. Hey, there it is. There's 10. That might matter. All four in the money round here. Knife McKinley. Lynn Duval, 35 years old from Florence, Massachusetts. 110 league bola, highest for a year of 115. High single 183 out of Richie Myrick's house, Canal Lanes, South Clinton, Mass. Going for over 32 years, her family got her involved. Won, the, won a junior tournament twice. Shannon just turned four into 10 with a ridiculous third ball, so that might make a huge difference. She's on 38 through three after a strike nine. 300 for fourth, 600 for second, 1,000 for third, first place prize, the second rather, for 1,000, first place prize, $1,500. Duval has a devious third ball coming up here. The middle rows are gutted, so one, four, seven, nine, ten is tough. Spare chance, and McKinley has it for her first. Second for the pair. Lynn not out. It's six for a 16. Final four out of 16, the best of the best of the best. On these four remaining lanes. You have just got one seven ten over there, a piece of wood. 48 through four, lane five to our right. It's a 10, but these, the X factor, putting those X's on the board can make a big difference. Six down, a check mark right for Glennis. She's got six and a 25 through two. Duval's made some sweet bids on this, but nothing's kicking off the sidewall. Good sticks on the second ball, though. Lance <laughs> McKinley bowled on the U.S. Invitational last year. Lennis from Hudson, New Hampshire. Each of the nine that time. Lennis 34 after that spare six and the nine, 34 through three. Lynn Duval 25 through three. Amanda didn't get that spare in the fifth box, but she's still got two spares and a 58 half. Look at this hit by Duval. She said so much nonsense to look at, makes good shots at it all. Now she's got a reasonable chance at the 4-8. Big hit! McKinley, well, I thought, but I left the 5-7-8, McKinley did. Duval, in there, yes! Her first spare. 35 and a ball through four. They're working on two marks now, their team. Can McKinley oh, slice this? The eight pin just goes right behind the seven. Burke Betteridge with a spare over there on lane five. 
58 to ball through six. Dennis McKinley, nine. 43 through four. Lindsey Bell in the Jeep shirt, the blue shirt on lane four, working a spare. 35 and a ball. Semifinals, the winners to play for 1000 or $1,500. Oh, it's four. Spread eagle on a spare. McKinley, nope, that's just a half Worcester. This is close. Looks like Amanda and Brooke have 106. Two pins on the second ball. And is that 65? I, th I think I think Leighton and Scribner are running away again, if you can believe that. That's 57 and 65, I'm pretty sure. Hey, that's not a bad second ball my McKinley. It won't collect the spare, but it collects a lot of pins. Good out to Vall, turns six into nine. McKinley, well, that's <laughs> not far off, 10. Nine's fine. Halfway through the elimination round, semifinals. The winners go to the finals. Runner-ups get 600 for third, 300 for fourth. Based on total pinfall, not head-to-head. -head. Elimination round. Two-string final to follow next, live on Caleb and Bowling Network. What? Subscribe free on YouTube, Caleb and Bowling Network. Amy Doobie, eight on the spare. Sixty-three half is it, Greg? Oh yeah. Just, just missed the spare. Deb Drogas, fifty-two half. Her teammate Glennis a fifty-two half also. One hundred four combined. Amy Dubia nine. Who runs the Sunday month monthly draft mixed pro league starting next Sunday live on Kenlip and Bowling Network nine o'clock and twelve o'clock broadcast next Sunday September eighteenth on Kenlip and Bowling Network nine sixty-one through. Six for Deb. Are you want $100 in raffle money? It's going to get at least $300 here to split. Maybe $600, maybe $1,000, maybe $1,500 to split. Doobie, Amy, one, three, and the seven. Nine blocks, give her 72 through six. Deb breaks the split, has a chance. The three, six, and 10, as easy as it looks. They only go about 51% for pro bowlers without wood based on Kenlin Pomo Network stats. Doobie, good try, two full. Three to the right, seven to the left. Little right, that's cutting over. Deb missed it, got the wood to hit the three pin only, but at least up to six and 10. Amy tries to kick it over, field goal for an eight. 80 through seven, semifinals from Exeter Lanes, Exeter, New Hampshire. Eight for Deb. 69 through seven. Paul Grant, Greg Gouya with you live on Kenlip and Bowling Network. It's been a great day, Greg, hasn't it? It's getting better and better as we go, and we're about to hit the finals. Thank you so much to everyone who made this a part of your day in some way or form. We really appreciate you being here, supporting the bowlers, and we thank you very much for your support by watching. I'm so happy for the women bowlers. They finally get their day. You could say the day in court. Their show, they get to be the showcase, the spotlight for a day. So happy for the women. They all gave it their best. Some of the top teams in the limited qualifying rounds got knocked out in the first round, but everybody giving their best. And great sportsmanship overall today. DeRocher has a chance against the 136. Shout out to the Lady Bowlers. Looking at at least two, maybe three events next year, a handicap and another one of these next year. Oh, what a try! Wow, what a shot! Ten. All that for a 10? It's never seemed to go for spares. 90 in a ball through eight. Semi-final round. Elimination round. Eight for Deb DeRoges. 77 through eight. Amanda Carroll, 58 half. Uh-oh. That's lane five, Carroll's on. She's, well, she's got a chance with this one. Back to our action, Amy Doobie. Well, guess what? Four horsemen in an inner pin. Work out a 104 on his teammate. Mm, now, Terosher got eight. I'm not sure this piece of wood's going to come up far enough. 
But there is one in back. It Tubi might be Caleri. sweepable. Ooh. Try after ball. Thought she had it. She's short. Just short on the eight. In Maine, we call it the Christy Hapwood special with oh. Larry. DeRocher is a very interesting situation. There's a pin that might sweep in the back here. That might be hard. It might be hard to scoot around that front piece of wood, though. Exactly my thought. So I think it's go right of the wood into that wood. Let's see how she plays it. She goes red line ah, and yes. got it. That's why we're back here. Big spare. In the ninth. 87 the ball. Nine for Amy Doobie, 99 through nine. So they combined a 147, Amy Doobie and Linda Ball right now. <laughs> 139 plus the ball combined for Glennis McKinley and Deb Rosia. Nice ball. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, there goes the split, though. That helps the five and the eight. This has a chance. Oh, 10 isn't going to stand. Six on the fill, 93 through nine. Well, the 10 will stand. Two string finals next on Canlip Bowling Network, right after this string. Amy just missed it by a speck. Deb, nice ball. Good try. That ball shot just wide of the 10 pin. It wasn't far at all. She wanted to cut inside. The Two and the four, but couldn't do it. We got the outside. True. Amy and nine. Amy Doobie, 108. Semifinal string. Nine for Deb Droge. It's 102. So they got five blocks to go. 154 combined on the left for Glennis McKinley and Deb Droge. Okay, give us an update, Greg, in the scores. Yeah, 156 and 154. Man, the typos I make sometimes. I nearly gave her a lot more credit. But. So two pin difference, not head to head, though. I'll check the other scores in a yeah. moment. Yeah. Greg, why don't you finish it up? I'm going to check the other scores. Yeah, I think lanes five and six have the edge right now, but we'll see. Five boxes left. Duvall, uh, sidewall carom is there, but doesn't cut across. And he'll let the four horsemen nine and ten. Usually what happens with this outpost and nine leave is that the inner pin stays up. Let's see if Duvall can find another way through. On the head pin and two full. Hard to win with that one. McKinley is 5'7". Hit the wood, nope, not frozen back there. It's eight. At eight. Shout out to Nate Lees for helping out run the, the event today, behind the scenes, and brought the car, helping out. Great help. Thanks for the help. Almost $200 raised so far for Candlepins for Cancer today. One of the sponsors along with Amanda Carroll's Team Maine. Thank you for your donations and sponsorship to this great game of the women's inaugural doubles event here in Extra Lane, Shooters Club Sports Bar. I'm going to start wagering Lynn needs to start putting something together. She has been. <laughs> generally good but now the marks need to come because it looks as though lanes five and six are likely to advance i think they're both on pace for over 200. in fact shannon just got a spare in the ninth thanks to greg glennis and uh, deb derosh as they raised 500 dollars in raffles for the for the uh, to sponsor rather this event to help the prize fund 1500 dollars in prize money to help out amanda needs an out on lane five hey spare glennis mckinley gets it Possibly opportune if they can, she can start putting some together. Glennis needs to go on a run, but this might be the start to that. Amanda Carroll caught money to mark because their team is uh, only 201 combined right now with one box to go. I think she's a mark to advance to the finals. That might not be enough. We'll see if we pin out here. And McKinley's fill is going to be a big factor. They are hovering around that same 200 region. This is going to get interesting down the stretch. You've all, uh oh. Big fill here for Glennis McKinley in lane three. Get overhead, pin. Big seven. Yep. 77 through seven. Anthony needs that mark over there. No. And they might be in trouble. Oh, look at this. 
Getting this good to Kelsey Lane are into the finals. Oh, what a try. Wow, so close. What a bid. And look at the reaction. That near, again, an object near the 10 pin, nearly collecting another mark for McKinley. This piece of wood is an absolute jerk. It's never, oh, man. Well, shows you what I know, 10 box. Shannon has scored the 124, Kelsey Layton, and 109, they have 233, they're in the finals. As of now. Amanda Carroll, 101, Brooke Betteridge, or 107 is it? 104, that's 205, you see it there. Okay, so 205 from either of them will get there. Duval needs a mark, McKinley does not. If she pins out. 2.05. So Glennis needs at least 16, I think, the tie, I believe. 16 with tie, yeah. Oh my, oh. triangle won't go. Yeah, we could be in trouble now. Two get a object pins for Lynn Duvall. Yeah, she, she needs a mark in the 10th to have a chance. And now this head-to-head -head comparison might actually become significant, even though that's not strictly true. Might be seeing the horse race here. Outside, okay, pins matter. Can Glennis? Chance. Glennis really wants a ninth pin out of this. That's nine for Duval in the channel. Yes, that's a very significant ninth pin. One ninety-eight. There's two oh five on the board. She. Glennis needs an eight, and she will advance. All right, interesting finish here. What's the magic number for Glennis to clinch the finals? Eight. 193 for Lynn. So she needs a mark for sure. I'm, I'm desperately not trying to say it out loud. She I needs a mark for sure. Do not. What's Glennis have right now? Glennis, 102, they're at 198. She needs eight to get into the finals potentially. Lynn needs a mark to get in the finals. Shannon's going to Kelsey Layton, 238. They are in the finals. 1,000 to split, 1,500. And they bought seven, they bought six wild shirts for their league in, in Scarborough, Big 20. So you buy a wild shirt, you're blessed. <laughs> Kelsey Layton, Shannon Scribner are through. 238. Semifinals, final box. Brooke Betteridge and Amanda Carroll, 205. But we have two bowlers capable of taking that total. Waiting for lane four to get reset here. If either of them mark, they have a chance. But if Glennis McKinley just gets eight, a Glennis McKinley eight would work against the Duval Open. If Duval spares, all bets are off. Box 10. Duval, big hit! Triangle five. That gives her a chance. Glennis, the finals chance. No. Six. Okay. Is that tied now? She needs two more of these. Shoot to get in. Shoot at least get in. That piece of wood. Mark. Oh, Cherry's through. Glennis needs two to win or one to tie. Is that right? Ne needs two. Yep, those two. That did it. That did it. Glennis McKinley and Deb DeRosias are in the finals. Amanda Carroll, Brett Petrovich are out. Low scoring strength for them, 205. Glennis McKinley, an eight. And I think they win it by one pin. It's a one pin one win. One pin win, 206, what a finish. Amy Doobie, Linda Val, great job. So $600 for yeah. Amanda Carroll and Brooke Betteridge. And Lynn hit two object pins on that 10th box. Yep. She hit the correct pin twice. Her and Amy Doobie split $300. And we're down to our two-string final from Exeter Lane Shoes Pub Sports Bar, the inaugural women's doubles event. What a day it's been, Greg.
Oh my goodness. It's the final two, two straight final for $1,500. The rump gets $1,000. Great sportsmanship from the ladies. Give it up for the ladies here. Final two, it's been eight months in the making, almost eight months in the making, this match. And now, finally, it's down to our final two. We'll keep it here live while we wait for the start.